And today we're back with some more One Piece. Last time we had like a, a debate, a whole argument, and I clearly won because this. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say he clearly won though? I did. He started saying he won. That didn't work. He literally put it, there's no debate. Like, what are we talking about here, bro? Anyways, I, I definitely, <coughs> I definitely did clearly win because in the comments, it was like 10, bro, all of y'all in the comments though, and for those of y'all that haven't seen it, we're gonna put it up as like a short or TikTok, y'all gonna see it. But basically, it was the like Garb versus Kardashian. You did not win that because, listen, Listen, Gar was. Like, we don't, like, we don't, we don't have to argue game. We just, you know, I said, just. My son. We can make a whole separate video for it. <laughs> yeah, who would win? Gar or Kakada? Gar, nigga. That's what I'm saying. I don't even have to think about that. Come on now. Yes, it, it's even just, though, just in the brain know, already. It was, they were telling us that you don't have no, hockey. No, literally blah, every blah, blah. single person listen, listen, in the comments. Listen, listen, hockey does not work. Nigga, so how would they hit him? How would he hit Crocodile? Because he's gonna work in another world. You don't have Idiot. hockey. Exactly, Gar doesn't have hockey, so he wouldn't listen, be able to hit Gara, nigga. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because hockey. Gar doesn't have him. Hockey. So he wouldn't be able to hit Gar. No, Gar wouldn't be able to hit him. Gar will control Because he it. doesn't have. He would try to hit him. That's what I'm saying. But he's a human. He's a human body. What are you talking about? As soon as he uses stupid. Th see, that's Logan for him. He's a human. What are you talking about? Logan Farm turns yes, into sand. His body, he has a human body. And you can't control his body. He can never he's use his sand because he has, as soon as he turns into sand, he Gar will control him. Exactly. And Gar is way faster than Ninja, Nigga. bro. Ninjas are automatically faster First than pirates, bro. This thing is like no. Goku. Are you serious, Ryan Neal, bro? This thing is retarded. I didn't know it. He got fucking destroyed. He got destroyed. He didn't get destroyed. He got destroyed by Shasuke. And in the, he got a show by moderate nigga, anyways. Hey, what about the fucking leaf nigga? I mean, the, the leaf nigga. Is this nigga serious? <laughs> Yo, this is. <laughs> this clearly shows that he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Come on, Rock Lee, bro. Rock Lee doesn't have any. But look how fast he was once he took off the weights. Yeah. Luffy is not even Luffy. Crocodile. Crocodile is way faster than that nigga. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm talking about adult, adult Gara and adult Crocodile. Nigga, like, Crocodile is always bro, adult. Gara has a limited, he, he uses Chakra to use this shit. He can't, he has a limited, he can, he, he's, he's not, limited. he's not seeing him stop Crocodile is infinite. He's not seeing him stop it. Chakra. You just not seeing him stop And what do you do after that? Did he, did he beat Mother? No, he didn't see him. Mother, no, no, just see him literally protects him. Nigga. Yes, he has a whole damn near his own mind, bro, to protect him. Yes. I don't know why we're arguing about this. this yeah, literally everybody in the comments literally basically bro, I'm saying this. We could argue. The games. comments, look, it was like 250 people or some shit that said crocodile would smoke him and like three people that said Gara. You over, were that's people. overall one piece video. Imagine you made a Naruto. Nigga, it was video. Naruto fans. How would they know Naruto if they didn't It was a One Piece it? titled video, but they see Naruto. No 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 no. You put it in the middle of the video. Anyways, man. We have a whole video about like the basic in another video, but today, you know. I knew the story, God was the No, he wouldn't. You saying that after being, after cutting to go to the market is fucking crazy. But, anyways. Oh, okay, hold he on, gets hold away on, with it because he doesn't, on, you know, he doesn't we know shit. Crocodile fight again, but we're talking about what we see. No, crocodile, bro. Dude. No, I was beating him. Anyways, today is a top 10 One Piece character introductions, and it's, it doesn't spoil too much, so we just like, and it was recommended in the comments too. So we're just gonna get into it, bro. Before we move on, do y'all see that number? That's a crazy difference. And all we ask for you guys to do if you enjoy our videos is to press that subscribe button. Thank you. Oh fucking boat. We are fucking monster. In anime, yeah, they it's all about the characters, sometimes even more than the story. We've all got our favorites. A lot of work goes into building a character, such as their appearance, personality, powers, quirks, ambition, and backstory. And then, of course, there's the important character building tool, a powerful introduction. That brings me to the subject of my video today, the top 10 One Piece character introductions. One Piece, as we know, is full of characters big and small. Many of these characters have blessed us with their imposing presence from their very first frame. These first 
first impressions, even if they came hundreds of episodes ago, have stayed fresh in our minds. So without further delay, these are the top Let's 10 One him. Piece character introductions. Oh, Presenting the rookies with a reputation is at number one, 10. One Who is over our introductions? A gorgeous glutton, a gamblos, a magician, a guy mm. with a killer tune, a magnetic redhead, a master yeah, sassy, killer. a former killer. law enforcer turned outlaw, a mad monk, a tattooed surgeon, a rubber limbed airhead, and a swordsman with a penchant for losing his way. Do you recognize them? I'm sure you do. The supernovas are the Yoda. 11 pirates oh. who made a name for themselves. I never get how Zora is a supernova. I thought I supernovas have powers. I think some who who did they all do have no food trade. Right? Yeah, they all have no food except Zoro. So how is he a supernova? Like, because he's just that strong, bro. He's just that strong. I look, I look, I look, I look, I look, I look, I look he wanted uh, Sanji to be in there too, but you know he's just not. Sanji really they, is a supernova though. They, they be doing them dirty, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, that's, that's a blind hand book. Yeah. Man, cook. Very early in their wayward careers by attracting bounties of over a hundred million berries. Not only does this make them a serious oh, okay. threat to the world it's government it. oh. and the marines, it also gives them an air of notoriety, which they obviously revel in. Being such unrivaled talents, this lot do deserve a grand introduction. And that's exactly what they get in the Sarbodi Archipelago arc. First through a rogues gallery style <laughs> slideshow of their bounties, love, and then bro. by getting to display their exploits in what remains one of the most rambunctious multiplayer like fights in One Piece. Just two chapters after we were introduced to the supernovas, we get to meet the famed former first mate of Pirate King Goldie Roger. It's a quietly powerful first impression, just right for a legend. The young mermaid's been called by slave traders and is to be the star attraction of an auction attended by the world nobles. The auctioneer is giving her a hard time, but as he attempts to put an exploding device around her neck, he suddenly passes out. Behind him, in a prison That's for other so slaves, the like old man with a familiar like white shit. beard takes a sip from his whiskey flask as the giant sitting beside him tells him he knows it was his haki that saved the mermaid. This is a clever introduction if you look deep enough. It starts off Rayleigh's story with a little display of haki, a teaser of sorts to the veteran pirate's future role as Luffy's haki coach. This nigga's strong as hell, bruh. This arc had a lot of introductions, bruh. Uh, sure. When we first see Kizaru do shit, yes, bro. He was nice. tearing them up. Crazy. Wow. Crocodile. The, the, the loser. Hating, bro. <laughs> Next up, we have the Sandman himself. I was so random. Before he was revealed to be the primary antagonist of the Anabasta arc, we meet Crocodile as the hero of the Desert Kingdom. Standing atop a tall building, all the townsfolk seem to love this imposing figure with a golden hook for a hand. They chant his name and hail him as their protector. Unlike most early villains in this long-running One Piece saga, Crocodile's had a gripping character trajectory and journey for what little we've seen of him. He started off as a former crime boss and warlord of the sea, who set out to steal an empire. He was one of the first powerful rivals to cross paths with a young Luffy and had some devastating defeats. He turned it it into an unlikely <laughs> ally, but it's still a mystery where his loyalties really lie. Given his ever-evolving character and the potential for his return, Crocodile's introduction in Alabaster remains a memorable one. Thanks. Smoke He's smoking. That would be guy right there on the ground. No, 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 because he's over here fighting normal civilians. Yeah, I know. You see how the the thing was uh, spinning around? around? Yeah, yeah, that would be him. Now, yeah, that would be Gar controlling him. If he touch Gar once, he has power. If he touches it once, Gar dies. And no matter power? what. What's that power? Remember he even touched Remember how power? like he'll have like a like a blade of hand. As soon as it cuts you, your whole body just dries up. You remember when he did Luffy? He grabbed Luffy up, but he beat Luffy like he beat a couple times, times, bro. Yes, lifted him up like this, and his body didn't have any fucking. He was like, oh, you dried him out? Yes, bro, yes. But Luffy's made of rubber. Yeah, but I'm saying, though, any human who touches like this, they're fucking getting fucked he up. He can't touch Gara. He can't touch Gara. Yes, he, can, he can't even touch him. He's too fast. Yes. Wait, no, no, no. Kev, who's faster? You think this pirate or a ninja would be faster? A ninja? Listen, we're not, we're not just talking about that. These niggas are fast as fuck. 
It's not even just. Oh, they're so private. Saying, just saying, Garnas, well, first than. of all, Luffy uses mo- his freaking stretch ability to stretch out to make him go faster, bro. No, no, he didn't even do that. No, no, he didn't even have that power at this point. Yes, he, he does. Was, no, no not, not at this point. Not at this point. That is. He got it there for what he was a candidate. I'm talking about he didn't have to make him go faster in your second. He didn't have that power. Oh. At this point. That's what, that's what, that's Nigga, what, uh, but he still, about. the only reason he beat him was because he knew his weakness. Gar would not Martin. know his weakness. You think you think Gar is smarter than how Luffy? How the hell would he figure out Gar smarter than Luffy? They, they, t- see how they told smart. him his weakness. Uh, Gar- Gara acted. Nigga was mad, chill, mad smart. He knows. Nigga. Intelligent. Gara got beat by baby Wise. Sasuke. Huh? By baby Sasuke. They're both kids. And he didn't get beat by him. So, and he's a bro. Come on, bro. You talking about guys beating him? The dog girl. Yes, he's not beating him, bro. Yes, he is. Not beating him, bro. No, Kakunachi. Coming in at number seven Ooh. is Dracul Miho, the world's strongest swordsman. He's, he's, he's just like, thanks. He's cool, thanks. Every time he comes in, he's always introduction. Thanks, man. Isn't that the book? Yes, man. That would be early, terrifying. Hawkeye, as he's called, is an outlier even for a pirate. He's a single man crew traveling the vast seas in a ridiculously small boat with a ridiculously large blade. He doesn't seem to like conflict, he doesn't shy away from it either. He seems noble and honorable, but isn't about being on the seas and on the world's government payroll. It's only right that he makes a strong impression on David, his first act being to cut a pirate ship in half, leaving an entire fleet of pirates trembling in his wake. He's the man who single handedly destroyed their 50 strong fleet on the Grand Line, the Pirates Lament. What makes this introduction even more special is the flash of excitement on Zoro's usually Excited. impassive and face Zoro never as he reacts. sees Mihawk for never. the first time. Yeah, he never does. He's better as well. Mihawk for sure. He might he buy jelly beans as weapons, have a fondness for donuts, second. and Something have the like word sweet no, in his title. There is nothing first. remotely Me. sweet about him. Being the second son of Charlotte Lin Lin and one of the three sweet generals of the Big Mom Pirates, Gartakuri is as overpowered as they come, and you know this from the start. There isn't even a doubt, considering that he has a bounty of one billion berries. As expected, he manages billion, to bro. shock and awe with his Not first appearance, not. such as his power. <laughs> that power is going to be right there. <laughs> slightly into the future, a result of polishing his observation haki to such a level that it's given him the gift of clairvoyance, a power almost as rare as his mother's. Without making an effort, Gartakuri is able to predict the words that will come out of people's mouths before they're spoken, predict when an attack is coming and how many people are involved. It's a Godly ability revealed right off the bat yeah, for one of the main be. antagonists, like surprisingly, the most sympathetic yes, figure right. of the whole Cake yeah, Island nice. arc. Nice. This was a cool movie. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> At number five, we have Monkey D Dragon. I'm like, who the fuck? I was confused too, but he must have been somebody important. Nice. Other than the fact that he's the father of our hero, the son of Garp, and the supreme and commander of the Revolutionary Army, bro. very little is known about this man. Oh, no. I know for sure that he'll play a major that? role in the story that's yet like to be told, bro. but for now, he Actually, remains yeah, a fascinating not... secret, he's which is surprising in many so. ways, <laughs> given that he made his debut in the series at around the 50th episode. Due to flying. how his character has unfolded so far, Dragon first appears as a mysterious cloaked figure in a rain-swept town who saves Luffy from Smoker. The only thing that gives away his identity is the distinctive tattoo on the left side of his face. From the sudden and intense storm that sweeps the town right around his appearance, we can guess that Dragon's powers are immense. But like the man himself, they're still tightly wrapped up in mystery. Till Oda I decides to bring Dragon out to the power, open, bro. we can only remain in awe way, of this enigma. It has to. His story is so sad. That shit was sad, bro. He's a top. He, he might be top two, bro. You know how tall like, he is? Top, nah, he's tall as fuck. He's tall as fuck. But he was like white beard, handsome shit. But he yeah. was tall as fuck. His story was so tough, bro. 
With the plot of the Wano arc completely centered around him, we've all been waiting to lay eyes on Odin, and the big reveal doesn't disappoint. The shadowy silhouette we've been catching glimpses of for several episodes has finally made way for the man himself, a fierce warrior built for combat. Yet that's just one facet of his personality as we find out. A born never-do-well and wild child, an irresistible heartthrob with not very nice manners, a loud who thinks it's a good idea to cook a hot pot meal on a funeral pile, and a rascal turned do-gooder turned sense. pirate. Like, These two you, are different sides like, of Odin. Yeah. There's probably more. Oh yes, he's got some remember. terrific connections oh, too to Goldie about. Roger, that, Whitebeard and Shaxx no less. Food, Even as we wind like, down to the grudge match between like, Odin oh, and Kyrie yeah, that will be the arc's yeah. final act, it's Odin's story we'll be following closely in the meantime. Jesus. Say Mamma Mia because our third entry big, is the big Mom, bitch. a sweet hound and the first Yonko on this She's list. Crazy, I <laughs> hit. It's it's crazy, bro. <laughs> Yo, that's what he said. Yes. Listen, listen, listen. If you really think about it, your son will be have crazy bounty. He'll come out just looking just like you. No, what did you do? He came out looking like her? What? No, 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 no. Kanakiri kind of came out looking good. Pause. But he came out looking, you know what I'm saying, normal. You still can't get that though. So you take my head in there. Down. Yeah. That's you crazy. put my head in there, I'm gonna be swimming in there. That's it's crazy. crazy. But it's gonna <laughs> kill you. Act wrong. After it. The most powerful female pirate waltzes into the series with a bit of a song and dance. Instead of a display of power or personality, her introduction has a carnival or party mood to it. A tea party to be exact, which is her favourite activity. But look beyond the festivities, the rumble and the dancing folks, and there's something terribly wrong with this cheerful and harmless picture. The talking flowers and the yummy desserts that break into song are just the tip of the iceberg of strangeness. Big Mom's joy tune about planning a tea party and a wedding quickly goes into a very dark territory. Tree, with wow. lyrics about looting She's and killing. Big, There's wow. also a murderous look, look on her face, awesome. which clashes with her light and easy footsteps. As far as character introductions go, this is the perfect show for this right. unpredictable like pirate who's as childlike as she is, like as she is cruel, yeah. as powerful as she is peculiar. <laughs> Yeah. What is that? This nigga, bro. Ooh, on that. At number two, we have the man with the most innovative transport solution. Ooh, I will go that. I would be just like him. I think he's my favorite. Him or him? Uh, uh, undoubtedly no, has on, a fleet of naval warships oh, at his disposal to help him get around. But where's the I fun like. in that when you can ride a cannonball, right? Mm. Kizaru's entrance in Sarbodi is one of the most iconic moments in the series. The as far as character here. introductions go, it doesn't get more mm. unconventional than this. Him taking down the supernovas like it was nothing was just the icing on the bro. cake. If we talk about the three admirals at Wait, this point of the story, bro. Kizaru hold doesn't are seem... Are they still... Is Luffy still a supernova at this point? Uh, yeah. So he's he passed that. Back to Luffy too? Uh, this one right here? A lot of shit happened, bro. In that mm -hmm. arc, a lot, bro. You should, bro. You, should, you gotta see it. So much shit happened. But he's always like a level 100 player battling like level 20 people. Because he's just walking. He's one time. Yeah, he was fucking him up, bro. He's fucking him up. Like, he's what? crazy as fuck. Yeah, he's, Compelling a character he's as a, a real tiny, a ruthless yeah, authoritarian, a real Gigi, <laughs> who's a reasonable man behind his icy exterior. And yet he's the one who gets the most exciting debut among the three. He's been part of some truly engrossing contests. We can only hope that the fun times continue when that familiar figure in a bright yellow suit makes his next appearance. He's a real person too. Thanks. <laughs> I think... Meek. <laughs> Bro, he's literally... I think he might either... The <laughs> fastest character in One Piece, or one of the fastest, because it's fucking light. See, not yeah. that, He's OP, bro. He's number and that one, brings us to number one. Fucking Kaido, bro. It's Kaido for the win. Bro, he fell from heaven. Look at him. I mean, what beats riding into on, a scene on, on, on a cannonball, free falling from a sky island, and surviving the fall despite landing headfirst? That's what. That suicidal plunge is the moment we He's most associate with Kaido, mm -hmm. the king of beasts, and the central well, antagonist of the well, ongoing Wano arc. <laughs> Before his debut, we knew Kaido to be an unstoppable, invincible bro. force, more monster than man. In the episode. So since much that shit. dramatic first appearance, we know him to also be a tyrant with the power to transform into an ancient dragon, as well as a hopeless drunk with a grumpy 
disposition. It's these little character quirks that make him interesting as a villain, more than his imposing powers and physicality in his evil deeds. As the wino arc unfolds and the action intensifies, we can't wait to see his exploits. And this build-up of excitement and anticipation, I dare say, is all thanks to his fascinating introduction more than 200 episodes ago. Wait, it didn't end in the anime yet? Yeah, they are yeah, fighting, yeah. It ended already. No, 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 where they was like blowing up a mountain and shit or not. Or like it was all these freaking colors going on. Oh, that was when they were, that's when they was fighting Kaido. That was him? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Shit. That's because that's that's happening like yeah. right now. Look at yeah. And that fight's been bro, that fight's gonna be crazy, bro. But that was a W list though. It had like dang there fighting me, so I can't <laughs> every strong person in the world. I'm saying, bro. But this bro. That, that, that was a W video. That was a W list. We need to always got the, you know what I'm saying, W list and shit. Yeah. Like, I think Kyle definitely was the craziest introduction. Right. Right. But let us know what y'all thought of the video down below. And and I wanted to do uh, the hockey video too. Like, because it's, it's a video that explains hockey so that you get, like, the powers and shit. Let us know if y'all want that in the comments. And let us know what y'all thought of this video. But it's been your boy, bro. For the trip. It's your boy, Up Top Cash. And we out, man. Mm -hmm.